Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. What's the difference between a frequency distribution and a class frequency distribution? Or a grouped frequency distribution, yeah. Yeah, so instead of listing, what, individual data values, we just list a range of data values, like sets of data, yeah. But the formula doesn't change. What, the only thing that changes is what we use for our x. Because remember, in a class frequency distribution or a grouped frequency distribution, we don't know the individual data values, right? So that means that we have to pick a data value from our class to act as a, represent, a representative of the rest of the class. And so can you imagine what we might use? For example, in the class from 50 to 69, what might we use as our choice for our data value? So you said 60 because it's about in the middle, right? Yeah, so that's the right idea. Specifically, what we're gonna have you use is the class midpoint. Do you remember how to calculate the class midpoint? Yeah, add the two and divide. Add the two and divide, that's right. So if I'm looking for the class midpoint of the first mm -hmm. class, I'm gonna add 50 to 69 and divide by two. So what does that turn out to be? 59.5, very close to 60, right? You were on the right track there. So what we're gonna do is make a column, our, our data column, our X's, is gonna be all the class midpoints. Now remember, we don't have to add together each one and divide by two. What's the shortcut that we can do to get the rest? Add the class width, good use of vocabulary, very good. So we're gonna add 20 and get 79.5 for this one, add 20 more, we get 99.5 and so on. Okay, so we're gonna use, we're gonna pretend that in that class that we had two data values of 59.5. Of course we didn't. We don't actually know, could have been two data values of 50 or a data value of 50 and a data value of 68. We don't know, but we have to just do the best we can with the information we have. We use the midpoint to represent the class. But the procedure is exactly the same. Nothing changes. So we're going to do what next? Not add the midpoints, first multiply, right? Because we, we don't want the sum of the midpoints. We want to, because remember, each of these occurs a different number of times, not just once. So to get the sum of the data, we need to multiply the frequency times the data value all the way down. So we get each one of these products, add those up to get the sum of the data values. Yes, yes. Multiply the frequency times the class midpoint, do this all the way down, okay? And then, what does this symbol here, the sigma, mean again? The sum. The sum of what? See how I've titled this third column, Fx? Yeah, the sum of those products. It's just like you did with your GPA, multiplying the grade times the number of credits. You should have gotten 92.3 by dividing 7201.0 by 78, right? Did you get the same thing on your calculator? Good. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.